Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia John chapter 15 verse 3 Sabi ni Jesus sa kanyang mga disciples You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you So what is being clean? The outside body? The inner being Inner being Of course the inner being Because there's no amount of physical water That can cleanse our inner being Ang kailangan natin ay ang salita ng Diyos. So, I guess, uhaw na uhaw pala ako. And I think I just discovered that this year. Na super uhaw ako. You know what, though? I think that is something that many people only realize as they come to the faith. When I read this before, na-realize ko si Jesus pala pick-up line artist. Parang si Lord bumabanat, no? Miss, miss, uhaw ka ba? Bakit? Tubig ako eh. So if you guys are watching us on the YouTube today, we are still adorable with our Christmas hairbands. Burns is wearing his Santa hat that lights up, all courtesy of me. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. You would also... Thank you. <laughs> uh, you would also know that Tina is very sunburned because she just came back from Boracay. So do you want to give us a little update? I can't even remember the last time I was there. Boracay is so clean. Surprisingly... Yeah. However, no, that, but is that surprising? They did a cleanup that whole time. They they shut it down even, the right? Oh, oh pre pandemic. Oh, no, no, no. During the pre was it pre pandemic when they shut it down? Yes. Or during? Okay. So it's like I think so. Super super clean, but the roads of especially coming from like the right, the port from the airport to the port and then from the port to the landing port to the main island. Uh, yun, yung like the back roads going to the hotel, super, super clean. But since, you know, may pandemic pa, it's not like the Boracay Party Island that we used to know. It's, they just sort of turn on the lights on you around 11.30, make sure you're out of there. And nobody's allowed to walk on the, talagang wala guys, bawal maglakad, no loitering talaga, bibiga ka ng ticket. You also have to wear your mask at all times. But I just find it funny, uh, Natatakbo ka sa beach siya may mask, tapos tatanggalin mo pag nasa tubig ka na, tapos babalik mo na naman ulit. Oh my gosh, I did not think about that. <laughs> yeah. Oo, oh, oh, super, super like, and then, salagang sasabihan ka nung ano, may mga sisita sa'yo na, oh, mask on pag naglalakad ka. Oh. Diba? Oo. Oh, so, yun That's lang. Oo, oh, oh, very, very strict because they have zero mm. cases there. <gasps> Wow. Uh-oh. That's why. Oh, okay. so okay, ayun yeah. lang. And since it's December na halos, uh, it was kind of like freaky na, ah, daming tao. Ah, <laughs> uh, pero maraming tao. Marami ng tao. And padami oh. na ng padami because right. December na and even our flight was full. Yes, Mm-mm, Tina just got in from Boracay and um, I asked you about your trip. Aside from being curious about you know, what Boracay looks like now. I also wanted to bring that up because the parable that we're discussing today has to do with water and Ooh. spring and river. It's bodies of water today on the Narrow Door Podcast. Doritos, so come on in, flow on in like water. Um, oh. <laughs> I like and that. Yes, we have with us Instructor Abi Sagid from New Heaven and New Earth Shinshani Church of Jesus, who will explain this for us. Burns Okaasi is creator and um, host of Unboxing Catholicism. Tina Ryan and Sam O at your, your service. Host. <laughs> yes. You know what? I also want to say your tan makes your teeth look super white. I know, guys. But it's it? a laser. Ba yon? Tama ba yon? Like, 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 bleach. Uh-uh. I'm thinking now it's a good alternative. If you don't want to bleach your teeth, get a tan. This <laughs> <a> good one. <laughs> good this one. kind of wisdom is what you <laughs> get. Because you have to go fly to Boracay. I love it. Oh my oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. So this series is called Road to Revelation. We are going through the parables. They're kind of building blocks. Um, to understand the book of Revelation, at least according to the stance of New Heaven and New Earth, they are testifying right now um, about this book. And it's been, it's been, I, it's been enriching so far. What, like, what are your thoughts on the parables so far, Burns? I love the parables because there are so many things that we could unpack from them. Like, 
I remember first time reading parables grade 5 didn't make sense mm-hmm. like you know para ka lang nagbabasa ng stories but as you go grow deeper in your understanding of the scriptures pag alam mo na yung context yung culture symbolisms and all that man parang the parables are so inexhaustible you read it again and again at different parts of your life you're gonna realize a lot of new things because that's how beautiful the word of God is. It's alive. It pierces through the soul and it gives us a lot of insights because God has given this as our way to understand his manifest wisdom so that we can be with him. So yeah, yeah super nice. Mm, and I love that I we're having a dialogue see. about it. <laughs> that's what I wanted Took to say. the words out of my mouth. <laughs> no, no, true. Yeah. Nga. Um, like just adding to what Burn said before, because the parables, what I record lang is uh, stories. But now it's mm. like different. It's, you know, talagang may meaning siya and parang medyo cryptic yung dating and the way, you know, and Sabi would explain, ah, yung pala yun. Kaling. So, mm. I'm very excited. Bodies of water today. Yeah, yeah. So, please, take Take us, take us, and let's dive in, Insta Abby. What? Galing naman ni Sam talaga. Bye, bye, bye. Let's Puso dive na yan. in. <laughs> yes. Water, river, spring. Yes. Yeah, first, why are we doing this parable section? Simply because Jesus um, used it to give the prophecy for the second coming. And as believers, we would love to understand the prophecies that were given by our Lord Jesus Christ. And for what reason? John chapter 14, verse 29, so that when it does happen, we will believe. So last time, na pag-usapan natin about treasure and rich. And treasures are considered as valuable. Gold, silver, pearl, jewel, and all these things are referring to the word of truth. So as you can see from our previous episodes in the Bible, everything is about the word. Seed is the word, the yeast. It's also the word, scale, rod, fire. fire. Yung treasure. And we can ask ourselves why. Why God used these different terms para tukuyin lang yung kanyang salita? Diba? In treasure, fire, seed, yeast, food, scale, lahat ng yon. If it is not important, then why would God spend so much efforts to explain his words in so many ways? Burns was raising diba? his hand like a teacher's pet earlier. No, akala ko nagtatanong siya. Ah! Oh, he was asking a question. Rhetorical pala, so parang, ay. I <laughs> don't go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Burns. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I think lang kasi parang all of these are daily things that we see in life. And the Lord yeah. wants us to see Him in everything. Yun lang. Totoo. <laughs> Totoo. Kasi nakaka-relate tayo kasi lagi natin tong nakikita. Yan. Lagi oh natin yeah, nakahawakan, kasama yung mga bagay na yan para maintindihan natin ang ating Diyos. So, pero, but why people put the word as secondary to his life kung ganito pala kahalaga yung, yung salita ng Diyos? Actually, if, mm. but if we read the Bible, what is the most important thing out of anything? Ito yung kanyang salita. That's why we study in this way. It's not, parang this means this, this means that. It's not about asking yourself. It's about asking yourself, why would God do that? Why would he make the word something as valuable as water, as bread, milk, seed, lahat ng yun, ginamit niya. It is because our faith, our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding should be based on the word. And as we go through these topics, kasi marami pang susunod na parables, the question we need to ask ourselves is not, this thing means the word. Parang ganun lang. Ay, alam ko na, word yan. But what kind of word? Is the word being used for in that moment? Is it being used to grow something? Is it being used to judge someone? Is it being used to create something? What is it being used for? Kasi di ba kaya ginamit niya yung iba't ibang mga bagay na yun? That's why God explains it that way. So water, spring, and river. Three main concepts that we have to understand in this episode. First is the water. Second is the spring, which is the source of the water, and the river where the water flows. Oh. If, the re- if the water of the spring is pure, then the water that will flow in the river is also pure. Pero kung contaminated yon, then all throughout, 
hanggang sa kukuha sa tao na kukuha ng tubig na yon then papahamak siya kung madumi yung tubig. Pero ano ba yung lasa ng tubig? Isa ba naisip natin? Ano yung lasa ng tubig? Like What is water taste like? Mm, depende. <laughs> depende. Depende. Parking water kasi. <laughs> oh, so medyo malamis na miss. Mm, oh, miss ko yung tubig dati sa probinsya na ano. Yeah, okay, matamis sabi, na miss. Oo, oh, oh, may ibalas. Okay. Ibalasa niya, promise. Alat. Sa bukal? Oh, hindi yung may... <laughs> Hindi. Ma- actually, birds talaga, promise. Yeah. Medyo ano siya, manamis oh. na miss na ewan. But water itself has no flavor okay. naman talaga. Di ba? Sabi nga na iba, lasang hangin daw. Wala, walang lasa. Oh. Nakatikim na ba sila ng hangin? <laughs> Sa ensa. <laughs> Ay, ayoko na. Hangin yun, tingna, usok yun. Usok yun. <laughs> Okay, pero saan ba ginagamit yung water para maintindihan natin yung spiritual meaning niya? Una, it is the source of life. So imagine, mm-hmm. kung walang tubig, walang, walang buhay. buhay. Yan. And it cleanses. Sipin din natin kung one week walang supply ng tubig. Oh so, my gosh. Ang dumi ng bahay natin. Please think For please. sure. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, also, mm, pwede rin. <laughs> And also, can be drinkable or undrinkable. Paano naging undrinkable? Coachable. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng tubig ay malinis. Katulad yes. ng naman natin kanina. May lasang kalawang, may, may lasang ewan. For example, meron akong five gallons ng pure water. At nilagyan ko siya ng isang patak lang na lason. Are you going to drink it or not? Parang stupid dong tanong ko. <laughs> Pero ako so, rin sa Adi, hindi isipan ko gano'n. <laughs> Pero isipan ko, one drop lang. No, no. no. Hindi uh, diba? No. Kung uhaw na uhaw na ako. <laughs> But like, the point talk, is, oh, yung hindi. water kasi, if it is pure, it's pure. Pa yes, eh. ah, ayan. If it is tainted, then it's tainted. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga, merong contaminated or unclean na water. So tingnan natin yung water na ito spiritually or figuratively. First, it gives life. Uh-huh. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 and 2, sinabi doon, Listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. So sinabi yung, let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew. So who's teaching? God's ah, teaching. God's. And why is it like rain and dew? Kasi doon niya hindi rin tulad eh, sa hamog tsaka sa ulan. Saan ba nanggagaling yung rain? Sa langit. Sa langit. <laughs> Pero nag-evaporate muna yan from the sea. Uh-huh. What a nerd. It's science. Counters. It's science. Oh, <laughs> diba? It, it comes from above. And where does God's word come from? From above. Okay. John chapter 3, verses 31 to 34. There are two kinds of teachings. One from above and one from the earth. Ooh. So that's actually the definition of religion. Highest teaching. So rain here is not a literal rain, but spiritual. And it makes sense kasi diba yung rain... Dinidiligan niya yung lupa, yung mga damo. And in 1 Peter and Isaiah chapter 40, sinabi doon, men are like grass. So God's word is actually nourishing people, meaning it gives life to our spirit. And if God wants to send his rain, there is a purpose. He wants us to grow. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, sinabi doon, As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So God doesn't just give command just to give command. There's a purpose to understand. Prophecy has a purpose. God's commands have a purpose. But to understand what the purpose is, there's so much to understand about God to understand that purpose para maintindihan natin. 
if we want to understand God, then we need to know how God speaks. When God talks about this way, then we begin to understand if we know what He says. Di ba? Kung baga nagkakaunawaan. Kaya gamit yung mga parables na ito, makikita natin yung purpose ng, ng ating Diyos. And of course, katulad ng water, it cleanses. Ganun din ang salita ng Diyos. John chapter 15 verse 3, sabi ni Jesus sa kanyang mga disciples, You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. So what is being clean? The outside body? The inner being. Inner being. Of course, the inner being. Because there's no amount of physical water that can cleanse our inner being. Ang kailangan natin ay ang salita ng Diyos. Of course, dapat maligo pa rin tayo. <laughs> Kasi kawawa naman yung kasama natin. <laughs> okay. I live so alone, water, so you know what's yes. going down over here. Yeah. Go ahead. The water represents the Word of God. So even yung baptism na ginagawa natin, it's so important because it can help us to understand the spiritual baptism na ginugusto ng Diyos. Kasi di ba, yung real baptism naman talaga, ang meaning nun is to cleanse us, to purify us. At ano yung magpo-purify sa atin? In John 17, 17, sinabi doon, Sanctify them by the truth, by you. your word is truth. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. So, physical is meant for us to understand the spiritual. Katulad din ng 1 Peter 1.22, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. It means it changes our actions gamit nung salita ng Diyos. Pero kung merong water ang ating Diyos, si Satan, meron din siyang water. Laging may counterfeit. Si Satan. Katulad ng sinabi sa prophecy in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 22, sinabi doon, your wine is diluted with water. So ano ba, yung event, ano ba yung content ng Isaiah chapter 1? The chosen people who are reared by God, they betrayed God. And ito sinabi ng Panginoon ng ating Diyos, yung wine ay nad- nahaluan ng tubig. So yung wine and water here, ay hindi, isa, hindi physical wine and physical water, pero tumutukoy ito spiritually. So, ibig sabihin, may water na hindi belong sa Diyos. Katulad sa Revelation chapter 8 na prophecy, after patunogin ng third angel yung trumpet, merong great star blazing like a torch na nahulog mula sa langit. Nahulog ito sa mga rivers and springs of water at ang pangalan nun ay Wormwood. At anong nangyari? A third of the waters turned bitter at ang mga tao ay namatay dahil sa pag-inom sa tubig na yon. So ito yung water ni Satan. Ang dala niya hindi buhay, ang dala niya ay kamatayan. So if the water of God gives life, the water that comes from Satan gives death. Death ng spirit. So ganun din, ginamit ang water in the prophecy Then, paano ito nagkaroon ng fulfillment? For example, in the time ng Old Testament, in Amos chapter 8, nangako doon ng Diyos na I will send famine sa aking lupain. Pero Amos. sinabi doon ng ating Diyos, sinabi doon na it's not a famine of food or a thirst of water, but a famine Spiritual. of not hearing the Lord, that, ano to? hearing the words of the Lord. So, ibig sabihin, taggutom saan? Sa salita ng Diyos. Pero kung merong taggutom, meron ding prophecy na merong pagkain na ipapakain sa time na yon. Isaiah 55, sinabi ng, ng ating Diyos sa prophecy, Come to me, you who are thirsty, you who are hungry, come and listen. So, merong available na pagkain. At paano na, na-fulfill yon? When Jesus came. Sa so John chapter 4, sinabi ni Jesus na siya ay merong living water welling up to eternal life. And in the same manner, si Jesus nag-iwan din diba, ng prophecy na may tagutong, may famine. In Matthew chapter 24, there's mention of a famine. 24. Yes. Matthew 24 verse 7, there will be famine, no food, no water. Pero may prophecy din in verses 44. 
five to forty-seven, hindi sure no, na merong food at the proper time na ipapakain sa time na yon. So kailan to magkakaroon ng fulfillment at a time ng second coming? Because in Revelation chapter twenty-two, sinabi there will be water of life na magiging available don. So lahat ng mga nauuhaw, uminom. So this is a good thing kasi merong tubig na pinangako ang ating Panginoon. Ngayon, from water, punta tayo sa spring. Kasi ito yung source. ba? Diba? Spring or fountain is the source of water. So if figurative water is the word, sino yung source? God. Yes, God is the real source. But when God gives that water or that word to a person here on earth, that person becomes that spring. So figurative figurative spring represents a pastor or a preacher, a priest or a temple where the water flows out. So like in the prophecy in Zechariah 13 verse 1, sinabi doon, On that day, a fountain will be opened on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. So merong bukal na bubuksan na maglilinis ng kasalanan at lahat ng karumihan ng mga tao. So if it is physical, merong bang ganong bukal or spring na makakapaglinis sa atin? Of course, wala. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 11, binigyan dito ng, kumbaga, medyo clear to na saan magmumula yung fountain of life. So sinabi doon, the, the, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. So it makes sense. It will flow from the mouth of the righteous. So paano to nagkaroon ng fulfillment? Nung dumating si Jesus. John chapter 4 verse 14, sinabi ni Jesus, He is the source of the water welling up to eternal life. He has the word that can cleanse the people. John 15 verse 3, John 17, 17. And sinabi yung, what, yung spring is also referring to a temple kung saan nagpo-flow yung water. Then si Jesus himself in John chapter 2, he referred to himself as the temple of God. Kasi dun sa prophecy, kasi sa Ezekiel chapter 47, from the threshold of the temple, merong water na nagfo-flow, na maglilinis, at yung dagat ay magiging fresh water at ang mga isda ay mabubuhay. So yung reality non o yung fulfillment at the time ng first coming. Pero si Satan, may spring din siya. So the time ng first coming, kung si Jesus yung spring of the living water, sino yung spring ni Satan? na pinagdadaluyan ng tubig niya. False prophets. Yes, the false prophets. The Pharisees at that time, the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. Kasi sinabi ni Jesus in Matthew chapter 23. Tinawag sila in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 17, these people are springs without water. So spring without water is a false Teacher, teacher mm-hmm. teaching lies. Lies. Say yung water niya. Pero of course, deceive lang naman din talaga sila. Kailangan maintindihan natin. It's not to condemn, actually, pero hindi nila alam. Pero yun nga, kung merong spring, may source, may pagdadaluyan siya at yun yung river. Katulad ng, sa time ng first coming, si Jesus yung pinagmumula ng tubig here on earth, pero sino yung tumanggap? Una, the disciples. The disciples. John 7 verses 37 to 39, those who believe in Jesus, sinabi, rivers of living water will flow from within them. So yung mga disciples, sila yung river at the time of the first coming, they listen, they take to heart and spread the word. And sinabi, sabi nga ng Biblia, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oh, I love this verse. Diba? Yeah. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So yun yung tinanggap ng mga disciples from Jesus. So another way to describe then yung river ay through parang evangelist. Kasi ano ba yung ginagawa ng evangelist? They take the word yeah. from the pastor, from the preacher, and then they bring it out to the world. So yun yung river. So Satan, meron din siyang river according to Revelation chapter 8. Alam mo yun, kung may water, spring, and river, and just ganun din, din si Satan. Si Satan. Para sa ang purpose. To, to deceive, deceive us. us. 
Yes, sa sabay pa. <laughs> Excited. Oh, yes, game so show. Kami sa baba. <laughs> Kami sa <laughs> yeah. So, yun, yung water, spring, and river. So, lahat siya ay connected. And bakit natin to again pinag-uusapan? Kasi yun nga, naka-prophesy rin siya para sa time ng second time. Yun. Mm. Oh, okay. This one is short and so, sweet. Yes. Ano tayong narrow door, Batis? <laughs> But is you know, I hope but... Nino Nino <laughs> ni God <laughs> So as I was listening to Insta Abby earlier I wrote on my notepad God is the best writer he is so poetic I find Ooh. that yeah he's the best writer that part where you were saying that uh, his teaching he says is like rain because it comes down from heaven and then people mm-hmm. are said to be like, like grass Because we need that water to, to sustain our lives and to grow and all that. And for God to like speak in that kind of figurative language, I think is so beautiful. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's so poetic. Wow. That's very, um, the imagery is so clear. Yeah. Mm. So I guess, oh, no, oh, pala ako. Mm-hmm. Ah, Lala. Oh, oh, okay. oh, no, oh, pala ako. And I think I just discovered that this year. Na super, oh, ako. You know what, though? I think that is something that many people only realize as they come to the faith. It's yeah. like, is that a bad yeah. thing? No. No. <laughs> really? It's a gift. It's, no, but no. it's an observation that I have. It's like before the faith or God draws you in, you're in a state of just not even realizing that you're thirsty. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? But yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's my takeaway. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, you reminded me of John chapter 4. John, ano? Biglang, ano? Chapter isusulat four. ko yan, Bert. John, chapter 4? <laughs> chapter 4. Oh, okay, okay, I promise. Okay. Yeah. Tell me why. why. I was reminded of that. Kasi ang daming ohaw sa mundo. And then, you know, when I read this before, na-realize ko si Jesus pala pick-up line artist. Alam niyo yung pick-up lines? Oh, no? why? Why? Like, no? What did he say? Kasi Sige dito nga. sa John chapter 4, pag binasa mo yung buo na yan, of course, no, pinaparaphrase ko lang. Makikita mo na uhaw din yung babae. And then just mm-hmm. a John chapter 4. Is this the one with the woman at Samaritan, the well? Samaritan woman? Okay. Well. May dala siyang timba. Timba ba yun? Insta Abby. <laughs> Grabe naman yung timba. No? Basta may dala siyang oh, pantalo. Basta bansalo. <laughs> Tapos nung binasa ko yan, na-imagine ko yan, parang si Lord bumabanat, no? Miss, miss, oh ka ba? No? Bakit? Tubig ako eh. No? Kasi oh. di ba, that's the summary of the of what, of course, I'm uh-huh. saying. Pwede, pwede. Pwede. I'm inviting the Doritos. Basahin natin yung John chapter 4. Grabe yung power niyan. And you know, Tina, what happened to the lady nung nasatisfy, na-quench yung thirst niya? He went, she went about Samaria telling everyone about him. To her town. So, mm-hmm. And many diba? believed. Exactly. Many believed And because Jesus. of that woman, no? I forgot the name of the woman kasi in the church tradition, nabigyan ng pangalan yung babae na yan eh. No? So I forgot her name. Uh, Marites, si Marites. Marites. <laughs> Pwede. Sikat yan, si Marites. <laughs> Kasi chinismis niya yung, yung word na nabubuhay. <laughs> diba? Chinismis siya sa buong taong. Guys, buhay na ako. Ayan, si Marites is in the Bible pala. Uh-huh. Ayan, si Putin, yung kanyang traditional name, no Eastern Orthodox. And in the church history, Putina ang tawag dun sa babae Putina? na yun. Putina? Oh my God. Yeah. Or Putina. Hindi siya itim. Hindi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ano ba yun? In any case, no? Uh, yung sinabi ni Tina na uhaw siya, parang yun nga, biglang pumasok sa akin si ano, John chapter 4 kasi yung uhaw na yan, regalo yan sa Diyos. Nung nasa Fiscon, guys, may nagtanong sa akin na na nung, after ng talk sa Q&A, Brother Burns, what do I do? I'm already starting to doubt my faith. Sabi ko sa kanya, the first thing that you have to do is to thank God that you're doubting your faith. <gasps> Bakit tayo magpapasalamat na nagda-doubt tayo sa faith? Because if you are not doubting anymore, that means you are just taking it for granted. You're not even thinking about it. The mere fact you're doubting it, that means you are willing to get answers and you're looking and yearning 
or satisfaction, there is something in you that doesn't feel right about your faith and you want to know why. That's why you're doubting. Now, the challenge is through the grace of God, through humility and honesty and your study and discernment, you have to turn the doubt into discovery. No? So Aww. I think that's, the, that's what I wanted to share to Tina as a reaction to Insta Abby sharing. Then you sinabi ni Tina na, uhaw siya. Lahat tayo dapat uhaw. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then again, connecting it back to blind, deaf, rich, na akala mo lang rich, thirsty. Again, you, that's a state that you can deny. You can say, mm. I'm not thirsty, I'm good. You know, I'm so satiated mm. right now. But it's yeah. possible that you're not. And again, it's that humility of being able to admit that. Like what Amen. Tina just said. Wow, I was so thirsty. I was parched, guys. That's great. And, That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look at you now. Right? Like we're doing a podcast. We're studying Bible. We're, this is our <laughs> Friday <laughs> night hang. No, and, when Sam wanted me to call him, I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> But now I'm like, okay, yeah, this is my new thing. Friday yeah. nights are like, hmm. Aww. And yeah, you were Aww. you were exactly the person that I needed and wanted for the show. Mm. Oh, cheesiness. Cheese I'm coming sorry. out of our nose. I didn't sorry. know Sam is that cheesy. <laughs> uh, apart dun sa sinabi ni Tina na uhaw siya, that's exactly how I felt when I was in that searching phase. Balikan natin yung kwento na sinabi ko sa'yo, sinabi, shiner ko sa inyo tungkol kay Tarsisius, no? Now, he really defended that piece of bread that he offered his life for it. Now, there's another, other many, there's hundreds if not thousands of stories of many people who died for that piece of bread. And you might think, it's crazy, no? That piece of bread, these people are dying for it. There's this lady in China, no? During the time when Christians are ber- being persecuted. I forgot her name, but the, the soldiers entered the, their church, they ransacked the whole thing, and then they left the host dun sa floor. Yung tinanggal nila yung tabernacle. Remember in the churches, diba, the tabernacles are gold. Kasi sabi nga ni Insta Abby dun sa last episode natin, we wa- the, the, the container of the treasure speaks of the value of the treasure. And for us Christians, the Eucharist is Jesus, is Jesus himself. No? I mean, meron pa bang mas tataas at mas gaganda at mas lalalim na, na kayamanan kay, kumpara kay Jesus? No? In our faith, no? in our understanding of the Bible, Again, for the past 2,000 years, that's our understanding. He's really there. So this lady, this young girl, less than 15 years old, no, nagtago siya sa pews dun sa ilalim. Okay? Tapos nung umalis na yung mga soldiers who, were really, who ransacked the church, kinuha yung tabernacle kasi ginto, isa-isa pinick up niya. For the next 30 days, yung host na nahulog doon. Okay? And then, when she consumed the last host, nakita siya ng soldier and she was shot to death. Okay. Another story was, there is this uh, parish in New York. Okay. In this parish in New York, nasunog yung parokya, no? kumalat yung, yung apoy because of an overheat somewhere in the room. And then the, the firefighters were already there and the two priests you know, begged the firefighters to come inside because they want to get their treasure. So parang ang iniisip nila, ano meron dyan sa simbahan? Di ba? Baliw itong dalawang pare. They came into the, into the church and then after a few minutes, they thought they're not gonna make it out alive. And when they ran out of the parish, no, remember, nasusunog yung parish, imagine that dramatic scene. The priest was holding a piece of cloth in his hands. Behind him is someone who's holding a lit candle. And there, the firefighters saw that they were holding the Eucharist in their hands. And as a Protestant back then who never cared about the Eucharist, and for many Catholics, perhaps, no, hindi naman natin iniintindi, ano ba yung Eucharist na yan? Parang sabi ko, why would thousands of people offered themselves their very lives for a piece of bread. And that question made me doubt no, my Protestant faith. There must be something that I am missing here that I never understood when I left Catholicism. And so I tried to unbox that. You know, it was so hard because nagtatalo yung alam ko as a Protestant and you know, what the Catholic Church and the other Christians were teaching. But then you know, during one Mass, Yung sinabi ni Tina na hunger kanina, I really felt that when finally I realized, when the priest held up the host and, say, and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. You know, after all that I've read, all that I've studied, and all that I've prayed for, remember, hindi lang to dapat intellectual, no? it has to come to the heart. After praying for years, and finally I, I learned to accept that Jesus is really indeed in the Eucharist, I had that deep, deep 
hunger. Lord, I want to receive you. Who am I, Lord, that you are giving yourself to me? I am a sinner. And yet that's the reality, my dear Doritos, no? Despite all of our weaknesses, despite all, all of our defects, the God who created the heavens and the earth with the very words of his mouth said 2,000 years ago, this is my body, this is my blood. And by saying those words, he really made it a reality. And why? Because he wanted to stay with us. He wanted to be with us, to quench our thirst. So that like that woman in John chapter 4, we can go and be a witness and telling all people, the Lord is waiting for you. He wants to embrace you with his presence. Are you going to open up your arms? That's the challenge. And that's the question we have to reflect on. Are we going to open our hearts to the embrace of God's grace? Because God wants to quench the thirst that our hearts are longing for. And that is Jesus. Super passionate ako dito, guys. Kasi nga, I was... You have to understand, like St. Paul, I used to criticize a lot of Catholicism. As in, I tell people, Catholics are going to hell, you know. I told my mom to burn the statues of the saints. That's why it took a lot of hacking away of all this pride for me to realize, mali ako, mali ako, mali ako. I'm sorry, Lord, mali ako. And it's not easy to do that. You, have, you would lose friends. You would lose the dream of, you know, all of the things that you held dear. But he is the pearl of great price. His worth everything he's worth staking for he he's worth all the pursuit that we could have in life and that's jesus you know so that's what i wanted to share in all of our weaknesses in all of our failures god is there waiting for us to discern his presence so that he can bless us and he is present there and present in your parishes in your tabernacles hidden in the species of bread and wine like the dew fall that falls from the sky I mean, you know, with the Eucharist, like, again, that's a Catholic thing. And um, I think we have a parable topic that will specifically kind of break down this understanding. Obviously, in the Christian world, we understand it differently. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to connect everything that you said, Burns, to today's parable, which is water, Water, spring, river, river. which all have to do with the word and the source of the word. People who have understanding of the word becoming source of this life-giving water, which is the word. I guess the kind of question that I have in my mind is, yes, the Eucharist, we have the Catholic belief on that. But without understanding of the word, will the act of receiving the Eucharist mean what it like mean what it does you, you okay. know what i mean i get i get i get you sam yeah i get, I get you it. Uh-uh. Your, your last phrase is very important sam if someone doesn't understand the word will the eucharist do what it does is that it's is that your question yeah it's like going through the motion is one thing but what i think truly matters is having the understanding first, then the act will mean something. Right. But then, our understanding does not change reality. We have to understand that. No, our understanding of something does not, make, does not change its truth or reality. Okay, what, the, what do I mean by that? A lot of people go to Mass every Sunday. They think it's just a bread or whatever. No, it's just a tradition, practice lang. But for many Catholics, and te- to tell you, a lot of former Protestant Bible scholars, pastors, and theologians who became Catholics, and there are a lot, no, found the truth of Catholicism through the Eucharist and the anonymous witness of the early church. Now, Jesus is really there. Now, if someone doesn't understand the Eucharist, does that mean Jesus is not there? Of course not. So what is our mission? Our mission is to make people realize this treasure na nandiyan na sa harapan mo, parang love life lang yan eh. Minsan, di ba, ang dami, or not love life. Sige, let's not talk about love life. Let's talk about other things. Na we are looking for something that's missing. Ano ba itong nawawala to? And then makikit, ma-realize natin all the while nasa harapan lang pala natin. Mm-hmm. That's why it's like the Jew fall, no? An assuming, very simple, and yet it's real. Nandiyan yung presensya ng Diyos. Kung naintindihan ko ba ang Eucharist? Nagbago ba na naroroon si Kristo? The answer is no. We do not choose truth. We accept truth. That's why we have to discern the truth. And then I've been telling, no, I've been sharing in the podcast it, it, as part of my experience also, we don't go around and 
check a list of Christian truths and take off what we like to believe in. It's not like that. No, Christian truth was revealed by Jesus to his apostles. The apostles passed it on to us through word of mouth and written word. No, and we have to accept that and we have to see how it was revealed in its continuity in the Christian community for the past 2,000 years. So that's my answer, Sam. No, it doesn't change a thing. Now, that's objectively. But subjectively, okay, hindi ko alam na yung Eucharist nandyan si Jesus. Does that change my life? Well, I am missing out something because I didn't discern that Jesus is there. But my ignorance of that fact doesn't change reality that Jesus is indeed there. I hope I'm making sense. No? Parang ganito yan. Sabihin ko, uh, ano ngayon eh? Hindi ko kasi alam kung ano oras sa, sa Scotland. Hindi ko alam kung umaga doon or gabi. No? But my ignorance will, change, will never change the fact whether it's night or evening there. The lesson is, we have to know ano ba yung katotohanan. Yun yung sinasabi din ni Abby kanina. No? Na we have to be discerning. No? We have to be discerning kung alin ba yung uh, good teaching and bad teaching. And ano ba yung norms of criteria para malaman natin yung bad teaching and good teaching? Of course, the Bible, the Word. No, eh, pero ang dami-daming nagtuturo ng Bible. Alam nyo ba dito, nakatira ako sa Marikina. Pag nagpunta ako ng Quezon City, mag-MRT ako, iba-ibang simbahan na dadaanan ko, iba-iba tinuturo nila. But they all yeah. say they are basing from the Bible. No? So how do we know now which one is the truth? Of course, we study through discernment and we go back to the early church. What did the first Christians understand from the mouth of the apostles? That's very important. And I invite the older Doritos to geek out on that. I'm going to zoom out from all that because I think that's, you know, one aspect of the Christian world that we are looking at mm. in that, you know, exchange sure, that sure. we had just now, right? But I think what we are trying to figure out on this road to Revelation, because we're talking about end times, the second coming, that's what we're discerning right now with this testimony right. that is coming out of new heaven and new earth, right? right? And we've said on the show that, the time of second coming, the end time that we are talking about is really the time of the end of one era and the start of another. Because when you say Burns, and you do say this quite a bit, like we have to go back to the early church because this is what's been taught for 2000 years. And I understand that. But when we're now talking about end times, we're now talking about that era coming to an end is essentially what we're talking about. Right. So, yeah. and I In the understanding I, that we have in the podcast so far, but it doesn't mean that that is the general understanding of the whole of Christian world. That's, I wanted to clarify. Because the new era, okay, as far as the whole of Christian world is concerned, has started already 2,000 years ago. That new era, the, the new, as I've been telling you, diba, in our exchanges some way before, that yes, we are waiting for the second coming of God, and we are waiting for the full revelation of what's going to happen there. But we are not anxiously waiting for that because God has already revealed that he, he has been coming down from heaven to us in the liturgy. And that has been the understanding, again, not to sound like a broken record here, that has been the understanding. 2,000 years! Yes. And I would like to really <laughs> emphasize, we cannot dismiss that. And we are not saying that that is part of the past. Hey, the, the Bible is part of that 2,000-year history. If we're going to dismiss all of those things, might as well dismiss the Bible as a whole because that's part of it. Of course, we cannot do that. No, we're not disregarding. Yeah, no? yeah we're not disregarding the 2,000-year history mm -hmm. since Jesus was first here. Not at all. But I right. think, when so when we say the end time or the second coming is, again, the end of one era and the start of another, then yes, at the time of first coming, that was the start of a new era. That was the start of a new mm -hmm. order. But in this understanding that we're trying to discern with Sina Insta Abi is that right. the time of second coming will be the beginning of another one. Of course, the definitive yeah. one. That's also what's, uh, what uh, we have been saying. Yes, yes. Yeah. I so I think I just wanted to make that clear because I think what that means is that it's kind of like when Jesus first came, right? The mm. Jews were the established, you know, true religion. They were the chosen people. And it was that way for a thousand five hundred years. But when Jesus Bye. came, 
that came to an end and the people had to now listen to what Jesus had to say and be part of that order, that era that he started. And so in a similar right. way, that is what is going to happen is my understanding of what we are trying to discern right now. Yes, but we have to remember that when Jesus came, he also said in Matthew 23 that follow the teachings of the Jewish teachers, but not how they do not follow their own teachings. Meaning, yes, it's an end of an era, but it's not really a full departure from what was told. It's more of a fulfillment. Now, I remember J. Paul was saying when a Jew becomes a Christian, he is not being converted. He is being renewed. He is being, uh, he is being part of the fullness of truth. There is still continuity, Sam, and that continuity has to be discerned properly. Why am I saying this? As a Protestant before, I was teaching the great apostasy. What does that mean? After the death of the last apostle, truth remained oblivion. People were lost. They didn't know what will happen, but that will make Jesus a liar. Because Jesus promised so many times in the Bible, in Matthew 16, 18, in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, that once he has established his church, he will never leave his church. And St. Paul is telling the Galatians, no, Ephesians and the Corinthians, you have to keep on discerning what you heard from the ones who told you and pass it on as you have heard it from us. Meaning, may continuity. Kaya hindi pa pwedeng bigla lang tayong magde-depart kung ano yung naipasa sa atin. Dahil, for us to know kung tama yung pinaniniwalaan natin, kailangan malaman natin anong pinaniniwalaan ng mga Kristiyano bago pa magka-Biblia. And after they had the Bible, those beliefs did not change. It was faithfully passed on. That's why I keep on banking on history. We cannot treat the Bible in its isolation because it had a history of its own. And it's a great dishonesty if we're not gonna discern that as well. No? So yun lang invitation ko sa mga Doritos. Of course, this is not an imposition. This is more of a proposal. You're, I'm coming from a position of uh, like being a former Saint Paul to the Catholic Church, meaning lambasted it, you know, misinterpreted it, misunderstood it. That's why I told God for the rest of my life, I will be spending all of the days of my life undoing all the prideful mistakes I've done in the past, including what you were telling me, Sam. Ay, hindi mo mahalaga yung ano, uh, okay lang yan, tapos na yan, nakaraan na yan, wag na natin balikan. Bakit ba paulit-ulit natin sinasabi na kailangan bumuta sa early church? No, no. But I realized and I'm proposing this thought to you, go back. Go back to the source. Go back to the beginning. Because that's how we can make sure that what we believe in today is what Jesus told the apostles and what the apostles told their first Christians. That's not Yun what lang. I was saying. Yeah, that's not what I was saying about history. I'm just saying that I think when the second coming comes, whatever was... Like the old will pass away is what we see. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, I'm not saying that we should disregard whatever yeah, happened for the past 2000 years. We draw from all of that. I mean, we still draw from, you know, books like Genesis for crying out loud. I mean, the whole Bible is there for us, for it to serve as an example and a warning. That's what it says in the Bible, right? But I think what I wanted to clarify was what we are discerning here we are trying to understand the book of Revelation to understand if that time that is promised in the Bible where the old passes away and the new comes is now. Is, it's now is and I'm it saying. is to come. Yeah. That's how we understand it. It's now and it's to come. Okay. Yes. Um, Insta Abby, Insta Abby, what are, sorry. I mean, you're, you're the one, you know, who's from New Heaven, New Earth and you guys are the ones testifying all, about all of this. Like, what are your thoughts on, you know, everything so far. Dear me. Sa topic natin na water, spring, and river. Just like in the prophecy, there is a time na wala talagang, hindi sa wala yung tubig ng Diyos, pero meron pumalit na tubig. I mean, may prophecy na meron talagang tubig, pero meron taggutom. So hindi present yung water ng Diyos. So nung dumating si Jesus... Of course, the chosen people were waiting para dun sa katuparan ng pangako ng Diyos na may, da may darating na tagapagligtas. So for 1,500 years, of course, from the time ni Moses hanggang sa time ng first coming, ang 
kung baga kung tubig yung topic natin. So yung tubig na iniinom nila ay yung tubig na nanggaling mula sa panahon ni Moses. Na nagpasa-pasa, of course, yun yung commandments and all, lahat ng mga traditions na totoo naman, kinumad ng Diyos, lahat po nang yun. Na nung dumating si Jesus, hindi para i-break yung law. Hindi para sirain yun. Uh, yun yung, yeah, nagiget ko si, si Burns din, nagiget ko si Sam, but to fulfill. Pero kailangan nilang maintindihan at tanggapin yung fulfillment na dadaladala ng, ng Panginoong Yesus. For example, itong Samaritan woman. Sa napakatagal na panahon, hindi pwede makipag-usap yung mga Hudyo sa, Samar- sa mga Samaritan. Kasi nahati yung North and South Israel. Nahati hmm. sa dalawa. So ang tingin nila, dito sa mga Samaritan ay madudumi. Evil. Kasi sila yung mga pagano. And then si Jesus, sa salok ng tubig, and then meron silang conversation, and sinabi ni Jesus, meron akong water na makakapag-quench ng uhaw mo. Thirst. Ng thirst mo. Pero ano ba yung water na tinutukoy ni Jesus? Yes, kung, yes for 1,500 years, merong word naman talaga sinang iniinom. Pero ano yung kaibahan ng water na dala ni Jesus that can quench their thirst? Kasi fulfillment yung binibigay ng Panginoong Yesus. Kung maga parang ganito, pag ako'y nangako, habang wala pa yung pangako, parang hindi ka masasatisfy. Kasi mag-iisip ka, ano kayang kulay ng sapatos na ibibigay sa akin? Ano kayang brand? Yung ganon, pero kapag dumating na siya, okay, satisfy na ako, eto na. Pero it's up to the people kung kayang tanggapin yung fulfillment. So dahil ganun yung nangyari, si Jesus... Gumawa siya ng bagong tipan. This is the New Testament. And yes, yung mga disciples niya, the early Christians, ano yung tinanggap nila? Fulfillment ng Old Testament prophecies and at the same time yung prophecy ng New Testament. At sinabi ni Jesus, spread nyo to, to the ends of the earth and the end will come. So tinanggap nila yon Old Testament fulfillment and at the same time new testament prophecies. Ngayon 2000 years yung lumipas. Ngayon anong hinihintay natin mga believers because we are all believers of Jesus and we are all waiting para sa kanyang muling pagbabalik. Ngayon sa kanyang muling pagbabalik, nag-iwan kasi siya ng mga prophecies, ng mga promises. So makikita natin natutupad na ba o hindi? Papano? Based, pa sa, based sa naging fulfillment ng first coming, magagawa natin maintindihan. At yun yung ginagawa natin. Magagawa natin maintindihan ngayong second coming kasi nag-iwan ang Panginoong Yesus. Kung, ano, kung paano natupad yung Old Testament <coughs> prophecies at the time ng first coming, in the same manner, yung New Testament prophecies matutupad din sa second coming. At ganun po namin siya naiintindihan. So ibig sabihin, kung nangako ang Panginoon na merong tagutom. Ibig sabihin, ang mga tao ay walang naiinom, hindi sapat yung tubig na naiinom o yung pagkain na nakakain. Bakit? Kasi prophecy pa lang siya for 2,000 years. Pero darating yung fulfillment. Kaya nang sanabi, magiging available na ulit yung water of life. Kailan yun? When the fulfillment comes. So yun po yung, yun yun naman yung understanding namin. So hindi para baliwalain yung mga nangyari. Actually, yun po yung ginagamit natin para maintindihan yung present time natin mula yeah. sa mga nakalipas. Kaya sobrang halaga nung role na nangyari sa time ng first coming. Totoo po yun. Yeah. Okay. Hey, lang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I right. think yung nagiging different Sam is on the understanding on when this pro- when would these prophecies happen no and there are layers kasi I think you know I would like to tell everyone who's listening to the Narrow Door podcast that Christians again my line for the past, for the past 2000 years have seen the book of revelation as both has something that has already come and something that will come eh, kaya yung sinabi ko kanina no sabi nga ni Insta Abi na fulfill ni Jesus yung mga prophecies ng Old Testament. Now yung for example, yung Book of Revelation, if we connect it to Matthew 23, for a long long time everyone in the Christian world understood that Matthew 23, no, when Jesus said there that these things will happen in my in this generation, yung tagutom, yung magkakaroon ng uh, stars falling from the sky, all of these 
as history will tell us, have been fulfilled in the ranso, in the in the fall of Jerusalem. Magkaroon ng famine nun, no? The, sky, the stars were falling from the sky, meaning merong mga kanon. And as I've told you, no, history tells us, history books are telling us, nung nahuhulog yung mga kanyon mula sa langit, people were shouting. Anong sinisigaw nila? Naririto na ang anak. They really interpreted it. The first Christians interpreted the fall of Jerusalem as the fulfillment of Matthew 23. Now, does that oh, I mean... I think you mean 24. Sorry, 24. Okay? And the book of Revelation, no? Now, are we saying then that there is nothing else that will be fulfilled in the future? No, we are not saying that because that's not what the whole of the Christian world believed in. We are just saying that at one point, yes, in history, na fulfill ang 24 and those things prophesied in the book of Revelation, but there is a second coming. Now, the question is, in understanding the symbolisms in the Revelation, in understanding, along with those symbolisms, all the teachings, kasi di ba, in Staabi, you were telling about the true pastor, you know, the right teaching. The question is, paano mo malalaman of all the different pastors in the world? The Lord did not leave us as orphans to, to, get, to do some guesswork. The Lord, if we're gonna again go back to history and the Bible itself, makikita mo na, hindi naman tayo iniwan ng Diyos nang walang alam kung sino yung pakikinggan natin para malaman yung mga propesiya. Kaya siya nag-iwan ng simbahan. No? Kaya yung simbahan, mapaka-importante, and I think Instaabi will agree, except that yung definition nila ng simbahan is the church, no, Shinchunji, no, important na malaman natin yung, yung tinuturo no, nung mga quote-unquote pastors, nung mga churches na meron, and to connect it to whatever the Bible is teaching and how the understanding of this has evolved through the years. I mean, I, you know, I think it's going to come down to the book of Revelation, honestly. And I think that's what we're trying to discern here. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get there. But the road is kind of long. And I hope it's you guys long. stick around <laughs> until the very end. Um, well, thank you so much Insta again. Thank Insta you. Abby. Yes. And thank you to Burns and Tina, all the Doritos who are following and walking with us on this road to revelation. You guys are free to get in touch with us for whatever you guys want to say. Jump in the conversation anytime you like the narrow door podcast at gmail.com and all the details for all of our friends here on the podcast right there on the show description. Thank you so much again for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.